Hello all, this is a video for the course Basics of MATLAB. I am your Guru Siddharth Kaul. In this video, I am going to talk about function and files. MATLAB has many built-in functions including trigonometric function, logarithmic functions and hyperbolic functions. As well as there are functions uh, available for processing arrays. In addition, we have flexibility of defining our own function with a function file which we can use them as conveniently as a built-in function. Another type of file that is useful in MATLAB is the data file. This is also something that we will look into in this video. There is a long, long list of built-in MATLAB functions. Shown here is a small list of elementary mat mathematical functions. So under exponential category, we have an exponential function and a square root function. Then under logarithmic category, we have natural log and we have log with base 10. Under the complex category, we have absolute we have angle, we have conjugate, we have imaginary and we have real functions. And under the category of numeric, we have ceiling function, we have fixed function, we have floor, round and sign. All of these we will see one by one. Let's start with the exponential functions. Shown here is some usage of exponential functions and square root functions. First with the square root function, the square root function is a very simple function. It takes in an argument and returns the square root for the same. Like here we passed 9 and we got in return as 3. That is the square root of 9. A step ahead of this is that square root is also capable of finding imaginary roots. Uh, like for example, uh, let's pass argument like minus 9. The square root has values of plus 3i and minus 3i. The square root function here will only return the positive root that is the plus 3i. The good thing about MATLAB is uh, everything is an array. So when we pass an array into a square root function, it does an element by element operation and returns the square root of each of the element. Like for example, here I have passed value of 5, 7 and 15. So when I pass, these, pass this array to the square root function, I'll get independent square roots of each 5, that is 2.2361, 7, that is 2.6358 and 15, that is 3.8730. Similar to square root function, we have exponential that does e to the power x. So when we type exponential of 2, we are basically calculating the e to the power 2, where e is the base of the natural logarithm, logarithms. So to see like what is the value of the base of natural logarithm, we can just type exponential of 1, that will return the value of e. So the value of e we get is as 2.7183. Now let's see the complex functions available. To handle complex number, MATLAB has a set of complex functions. We have absolute of x that calculates the magnitude m and angle of x that calculates the angle theta of the complex number x. The function real of x and imaginary of x returns the real and imaginary parts of x. We also have a conjugate function that computes the complex conjugate of x. Shown here in form of code are certain facts related to complex numbers. We have two complex numbers x and y. x is minus 3 plus 4i and y is 6 minus 8i. Magnitude of x and magnitude of y are found using the absolute function and passing x and y as input arguments respectively. So we get absolute uh, magnitude of uh, x as 5 and magnitude of y as 10. Now we know that the magnitude of product of two complex numbers x and y is equal to the product of their magnitude. So magnitude of that product is absolute of x into y. So when we find absolute of x into y, we get a value of 50, which is same as multiplying 5 and 10, multiplying their independent magnitude, that is 5 and 10. Now the angle of x is found by the function angle and passing the x as argument, and angle of y is similarly found by uh, using the function angle and passing y as an input argument. Some of their angles is uh, angle of x plus angle of y. So we have angle of x as 2.2143 that is in radians and we have angle of y as minus 0.9273. So sum of these two we get like 1.2870. Point to note that is when x is a vector of real values absolute x will not give the geometric length of the vector. This geometric length is given by norm of x. If x is a complex number representing a geometric vector, then and then only absolute of x will give its geometric length. 
Shown here are some examples for numeric functions available in MATLAB. Here we have a numeric array of y with elements 2.3, 2.6, 2.6 and 3.9. So first we have a round function. So what round does is, is rounds the number to the nearest integer. Say for example in this case we have 2.3 so the nearest integer here will be 2 and the second element we have 2.6 so the nearest as it is greater than 0.5 so the nearest integer for it calculates to be 3 and in case 3.9 the obviously the nearest integer is 4 then we have a ceiling function ceiling function what it does is it rounds up the number to an integer that is closer to positive infinity so in case like here 2.3 it will round it up to 3 as because 3 is much closer to positive infinity than 2. Similarly 2.6 it will round up to 3 as it is closer to positive infinity and it's 3 and similarly 3.9 obviously will be round up to 4 as it is closer to positive infinity. Then now let's tweak the numeric array a little bit. We'll change the element as minus 2.3, minus 2.6 and 5.9. Now we will use the floor function. So what floor function does is, uh, just like ceiling function, this also uh, rounds up the integer to the nearest infinity, but this time the infinity is negative infinity. So here in this case, minus 2.3 will be rounded up to minus 3 instead of minus 2 because minus 3 is much more closer to minus infinity. Similarly, minus 2.6 will be rounded up to minus 3, which is also very closer to minus infinity and 5.9 will round up to 5 as 5 is much closer to minus infinity compared to 6. Then we have an absolute function. So absolute function what it does is it it's like a magnitude function. So minus 2.3 it will take the only the magnitude of it and will get an answer as 2.3. Similarly minus 2.6 will get an answer as 2.6 and the positive sign will have no impact. So similar to these elementary mathematical functions, we have trigonometric functions. So we have trigonometric function, we have cosine of x, cotangent of x, cosecant of x, then second of x, sine of x, and tangent of x. All these trigonometric function accept x in radians. Similarly, we have inverse trigonometric function that is a, co a cos of x that is inverse cosine. Then we have a cotangent that is inverse cotangent. Then we have a co cosec cosecant that is inverse cosecant. Then we have a sec that is inverse secant. Then we have a sine that is inverse of sine. And we have a tan that is inverse of tangent. And we also have a, a tan2 that is a four quadrant inverse tangent that will remember what sine or what quadrant it is. These inverse trigonometric functions, they return a value in radians. MATLAB also provides built-in hyperbolic functions. So we have cos h that is hyperbolic cosine. We have cot h that is hyperbolic cotangent. We have cosecant h that is hyperbolic cosecant. We have second h that is hyperbolic second. We have sin h that is hyperbolic sine and we have tan h that is hyperbolic tangent. Similarly, we also have the inverse of these hyperbolic functions. We have a cos h that is inverse hyperbolic cosine, a cot h inverse hyperbolic cotangent, a cosec cosecant h, then a second h, a sin h, and a tangent h that are all inverse hyperbolic of their hyperbolic functions. There is another type of m file that is called a function file. There are certain differences between a script file and a function file, one of which is that all the variables in a function file are local variables, which means their values are available only within the function. These variables will not be created in the basic workspace. So function files have their own workspace to work on. Function files are useful when you need to repeat a set of commands several times. They are basically the building blocks for large programs. The first line in a function file must begin with the function definition line that has a list of inputs and outputs. This line is what distinguishes a function m file from a script m file. Its syntax is at follow. It is function keyword followed by output variables followed by an equal to sign followed by the function name and the input variables. The output variables are those variables whose values are computed by the function using the given values of the input variables. The output variables are enclosed in square brackets. 
while the input variables must be enclosed with parentheses. The function name should be same as the file name in which it is saved with the .m extension. That is if we name a function drop, it should be saved in the file drop.m. The function is called by typing its name at the command line. So if we have to call the function drop, we will uh, type drop at the command line. The word function in the function definition line must be lowercase because it's a keyword. Before naming a function, we can use the exist function to see if another function has the same name or not. Let's take a simple example here. We know that the function operate on variables within their own workspace and this workspace is separate from what we access in the MATLAB. Consider this function uh, this function with name fun that returns a single variable z and takes two input variables x and y. So z is nothing but 3 times x plus 6 times y square. We can call the function by defining two variables and passing them to the function or we can just directly pass the values to the function like 3 comma 7 as done in the last. If the values in the variables are the same, it will return the same output. Let us see certain points pertaining to local variables, though mostly common, though they are very common and they are like available in all other languages. But it's still worth uh, while to take a look. The first is the name of the input variables given in the function definition line are local to that function. This means that the other variables name can be used when we call the function. Meaning, if the function is defined to take input variables with variable name a and b, it is not necessary that we pass them with the same variable name a and b. All variables inside a function are erased after the function finishes executing, except when same variable name appear in the output variable list used in the function call. This feature particularly allows us to write generally useful function using variables of our choice. So we don't have to be concerned about whether the calling, whether the variable will have same name or other function will use the same variables or are we using the same name for other calculation. This means that our function files are much more portable and need not to be rewrite every time they are used in a different program. The M file debugger is useful for locating errors in function files. Runtime errors in function files are more difficult to locate because function's local workspace is lost when the error forces are returned to the MATLAB base workspace. The debugger provides access to the function workspace and allows us to change its value. It also enables to execute lines one at a time and to set breakpoints which are specific locations in the file where execution is temporarily halted. Here are some points related to global variables. The global command declares certain variables to be global and therefore their values are available to the basic workspace and to all other functions that declare these variables as global. The syntax to declare the variables a, x and q is global keyword followed by the variable a followed by space then x then space then q. We use a space and not a comma to separate these variables. This is important. Uh, any assignment to those variables in any function or in the base workspace is available to all other works, all other functions declaring them global. If the global variable does not exist the first time we issue the global statement, it will be initialized, initialized to be an empty matrix. If a variable with the same name as global variable already exists in the current workspace, MATLAB will issue a warning and change the value of that variable to match that of global. In a user-defined function, we make the global command the first executable line. We place the same command in the calling program. It is customary but not required to capitalize the names of global variables and to use long names to make them easily recognizable. The decision to declare a variable global is not always very clear-cut. It is recommended to avoid using global variables. Before moving forward, let's talk briefly about function handles. A function handle is a way to reference a given function. It was first introduced in MATLAB version 6.0. Function handles have become widely used and now frequently seen in examples throughout the MATLAB documentation. We can create a function handle to any function by using at the rate sign before the function name. For example, consider the following user-defined function f1. 
which computes y is equal to x plus 2 e to the power minus x minus 3. So to create a handle to this function, we just name the handle fh1 and type fh1 is equal to at the rate f1. So what this does this, this creates a function handle in fh1 for function f1. These are extensively used in function of functions where functions operate on other functions. One of the examples for function of functions is to find zero of a function. For this purpose, we can use the f0 function to find the zero of a function of a single variable, which is denoted by x. Its basic syntax is f0 at the rate function and x0, where at the rate function is a function handle and x0 is a user supplied guess for the zero. The f0 function returns a value of x that is nearer to this x0. It identifies only points where the function crosses the x-axis and not the points where function just touches the x-axis. For example, um, uh, we take here like f0 at the rate cos and we provide it a guess of 2. This will return a value of x equal to 1.5708 where it crosses the x-axis. Uh, let's take another example, say for example a parabola that is y is equal to x square. Uh, we know that this parabola touches the x-axis at x equal to 0. As this function never crosses the x-axis, so the f0 will never find a 0. The function f0 tries to find a 0 of a function near x0 if x0 is a scalar. The value returned by f0 is near a point where function changes sign or it returns NAN if the search fails. In case where x-axis is not crossed, the search terminates when search interval is expanded until to infinity, uh, NAN or a complex value is found. Uh, if x0 is a vector of length 2, f0 assumes that x0 is an interval where the sign of function at the beginning of the interval will differ, will differ from the sign of the sign of function at the end of the interval. Uh, an error will occur if this condition is not true. Calling f0 with such an interval guarantees that f0 will return a value near a point where function changes sign. Plotting the function first is a good way to get a value for vector x0. If the function is not continuous, then f0 might return values that are discontinuous points instead of zeros. Say for example, let's take tangent. So we write like x equal to f0 at the rate tan and we pass that guess of, guess of 1. This will return x with a value of 1.5708 which is a basically a discontinuous point in tan of x. In cases where uh, functions have more than one zero, it helps us to plot the function first and then use f0 to obtain an answer that is more accurate than the answer that is read off from the plot. So shown here is a graph basically that is a plot of function y is equal to uh, x plus 2 e raised to power minus x minus 3 which has two zeros. One is near x equal to minus 0.5 and one is near x equal to 3. So using the function file f1 created earlier like it is shown here we will use it to find a zero near x equal to minus 0.5. So we'll write something like this uh, f0 at the rate f1 and we'll pass a guess of minus 0.5. The answer we'll obtain is minus 0.5831. Now to similarly if you want to find a zero near x equal to 3 we will type x equal to f0 at the rate f1 and we'll pass the guess of 3. The answer we'll get is x equal to 2.887. Minimizing a function of one variable. The f minimum bound function finds the minimum of, fun minimum of a function of a single variable which is denoted by x. Its basic syntax is f minimum bound then we pass at the rate function x1 and x2 where at the rate function is a function handle and x1 and x2 is a range. The f minimum bound function returns a value of x that minimizes the function in the interval where x is greater than or equal to x1 and x is less than or equal to x2. For example, uh, f minimum bound at the rate cos and we pass a range from 0 to 4. This will return us a value of x equal to 3.1416. However, to use this function to find the minimum of more complicated function, 
it is more convenient and easier if we define the function in a function file for example uh, let's take y is equal to 1 minus x e to the power x we can define this equation in the following function file we'll create a function f2 and we'll define the output y as 1 minus x e to the power minus x to find the value of x that gives a minimum of y for the range 0 and 5 we just type x equal to f minimum bound pass the function handle of f2 and then we pass the range 0 and 5 the answer we get is x equal to 1 now to find the minimum value of y we type y is equal to f2 of x this will result in y is equal to 0 0.6321 whenever we use a minimization technique we should always check whether the solution is a true minimum or not uh, for example, consider a polynomial like y is equal to 0.025x to the power 5 minus 0.0625x to the power 4 minus 0.33 into x to the power 3 plus x square. Uh, its plot is shown in the background. The function has two minimum points in the interval minus 1 to 4. The minimum near x equal to 3 is called a relative or local minimum because it forms a value whose lowest point is higher than the minimum at x equal to 0. The minimum at x equal to 0 is the true minimum and is also called a global minimum. This is where a concept of global and relative minimum for mathematics comes into picture. We first create the function file uh, for f3 where we create this polynomial and we specify the inver uh, to specify the uh, interval between minus 1 to 4 we type x equal to f minimum bound then we pass the function handle of this function f3 and the range minus 1 to 4 the MATLAB will give an answer something like 2.043 to the power minus 006 which is essentially 0 that is the true minimum point now if we specify the interval 0 0.1 to 2.5 MATLAB gives us an answer that is x equal to 0 0.1001 which corresponds to minimum of value of y for this particular interval that is 0.1 to 2.5 but what will we will miss the true minimum point if a specified interval does not include it also f minimum bound can sometimes give misleading answers say if we specify the interval from 1 to 4 it will give us the answer of x equal to 2.8236 which corresponds to the value shown in the plot but which is not the minimum point on the interval 1 to 4. On this interval, the minimum point is at boundary at x equal to 1. The f minimum, proce f minimum bound function, it's basically it has a procedure that looks for a minimum point corresponding to a zero slope. In practice, the best use of f minimum bound function is to determine precisely the location of a minimum point whose approximate location was found by other means such as by plotting function or by some other different methods. There are four methods for calling functions or to invoke a function call. First is using a character strings that identifies the appropriate function, appropriate function file which is shown in the first box. So here we have a function that is fun1 and uh, we are using this uh, as a character to find the 0 between the range 0 and 3 so we will type like x equal to f0 and in the character constant we will write the function name as fun1 and then we will pass the interval as 0 comma 3 second is we can call uh, we can call the function as a function handle to an existing function m file as done in the second box so here in the second box what we have done we have used the function handle of fun1 that is we have written at the rate fun1 to call invoke the function third is we can invoke it as an inline function object as shown in the third box so here we have uh, written the variable fun1 and we have passed a constant character like x to the power 2 x square minus 4 and using the inline function we are calling this uh, we are calling the function in the f0 then fourth is we can use string expression to invoke a function as shown in the last box so we write the function as a string expression like x square minus 4 and we directly pass that string expression into the f0 function this is how we can call these are the four methods using which we can invoke a function call 
we already know that MATLAB has loads of built-in function plus it also allows for creation of user-defined function. Basically uh, shown here are the types of user-defined function that can be created in MATLAB. First we have primary function. Uh, this is like the main program. There can be many sub functions or sub routines that follow this primary function. But only the primary function can be called from the MATLAB command window. These functions are invoked by using the name of M file in which it is defined. The primary function has the same name as the function file. Second, we have anonymous function. This, uh, anonymous, this anonymous function enables us to create a simple function without having to create a separate file or, or a new M file. We can construct an anonymous function either at the command line itself or from within another function or script. Basically, we can quickly make a function from any MATLAB expression without the need to create name and save a file. Third, we have sub function. These are the functions that are placed in the primary functions and are called by the primary function. We can create any number of function within a single primary function file. Fourth, we have nested function that are the function defined within the another function. They can help to improve readability of our program and also gives access to variables in the M file. The major difference between nested function and sub function is that sub functions normally cannot be accessed outside their primary function whereas nested functions can be accessed, accessed outside its primary function. Fifth, we have overloaded function that responds, that basically responds differently to different types of input arguments. They are similar to overloaded function in any OOPS programming language. Sixth, we have private functions that enables us to restrict access to a function. These can be called only from an M file function parent directory. Let's talk about anonymous function. Anonymous functions allows us to create a simple function without needing to create an M file for it. We can construct an anonymous function either at the MATLAB command line or from within another function or script. The syntax for creating an anonymous function from an expression is f handle is equal to add at the rate then inside the parenthesis we pass the argument list and outside the parenthesis we have the expression. The argument list is a comma separated list of input arguments to be passed to the function and expression is any single valid MATLAB expression. This syntax creates the function handle f handle which enables us to invoke this function. Note that this syntax is different that we use to create another function handle like f handle equal to at the rate function name that is completely different and this is different. The handle is also useful for passing the anonymous function in a call to some other function in the same way as we do for other function handle. For example, to create a simple function called sq to calculate square of a number, we type sq is equal to at the rate x and we do a square of x. Just to improve readability, I have enclosed the expression in parenthesis as shown here. To execute the function, we type the name of the function handle followed by any input argument enclosed in parenthesis. For example, we will write x, x, sq uh, in the parenthesis, we will pass 5. So the answer we will get is 25. Similarly, we can do it for a numeric array where sq and we pass the array with elements 5 and 7 and the output we will get is 25 and 49. We can pass the handle of an anonymous function to other functions. For example, uh, to find the minimum of the polynomial 4x square minus 50x plus 5 over the interval of minus 10 to 10, we write something like this. We have poly1 and at the rate x and we have expression of 4x square minus 50x plus 5. Then using f minimum bound, we pass this poly1 and pass the interval of minus 10 to 10 and we get answer as 6.25. If we are not going to use this polynomial again, we can omit the handle definition line and directly type inside the f minimum bound as shown here. So we have f minimum bound and we pass at the rate x and then 4x square minus 50x plus 5 and then our boundary of minus 10 to 10. We can have a variety of anonymous function definition. Basically, we can have an anonymous function that can take multiple input arguments like shown here. We have a square root sum that is equal to at the rate that takes the input of x and y and basically square roots that square root of x square plus y square. So we will call this square root sum and we'll pass 3 and 4 and we'll get like 
square root of 3 square plus 4 square that is nothing but 5. We can also have scalar variables inside our anonymous function as shown here where we created variables a and b and then used it in anonymous function along with the input arguments. So here we created variable a pass it value of 6 b initialized it with 4 and then we create an anonymous function with at the rate that takes two input argument x and y and we operate it with a and b as ax plus by. So when we call this function and pass value 2 and 8 we get an answer as 44. We can also have anonymous function with no input arguments like for example date here is an anonymous function that takes no input arguments and returns the current date. So one point is that parentheses are to be included as MATLAB will not call the function in their absence and will identify only the handle and will not execute the function itself. It means if we are defining an anonymous function without any input arguments it is mandatory that we use the parenthesis otherwise it will MATLAB will go on looking for any other function a handle or it might also give through an error. A, fun a function m file may contain more than one user defined function. The first defined function in the file is called the primary function. This primary function has the same name as the m file name. All other functions in the file are called the sub functions. Sub functions are normally visible only to the primary function and to other sub, sub functions in the same file. This means that they normally cannot be called by programs or function outside the file. However, this limitation can be removed with the use of function handles. We create the primary function first with a function definition line and its defining code and name the file with this function name as usual. Then we create each sub function with its own function definition line and defining code. The order of sub function does not matter, but function name must be unique within the M file. The order in which MATLAB checks for function is very important. When a function is called from within an M file, MATLAB first checks to see if the function is a built-in function such as sine, cosine, something like that. If not, then it checks to see if it is a sub function in the file. After that, it checks to see if it is a private function, like which is private function are like M file residing in the private directory of the calling function. After that, MATLAB checks for a standard M file on our search path. This is because MATLAB checks for a sub function before checking for private and standard M file function. We may use sub functions with the same name as another existing M file. This feature allows us to name sub functions without being concerned about whether another function exists with same name or do we need to make long function names to avoid conflict, something like that. This feature also protects us from using another function unintentionally. Sometimes it may even supersede a MATLAB M function in certain way. The following example shows how the MATLAB M function sub function can be superseded. Like following example shows how the MATLAB M function mean can be superseded by our own definition of the mean. One which gives us root mean square value. The function mean that I am talking about is a sub function inside this M file. The functions sub func underscore demo is a primary function that is y is equal to a minus mean of a then we define our own mean function that is square root of x square plus x2 square and divided by length of x. Uh, sample example can be we pass the array of 4 and minus 4 and we will get answer something like 1.1716 and minus 6.8284. What if if we have used the built-in mean function we would have obtained a different answer we would get something like minus 4 and minus 4 4 and minus 4 so basically the use of sub functions allows to reduce the number of files that define functions for our application for example if it is not for sub function mean in the previous example we would have to define a separate m file for our mean function give it a different name so it does not conflict with the built-in mean function and something like that Sub functions are normally visible only to primary function and other sub functions in the same file. However, we can use the function handle to allow access to sub function from outside the M file as shown by the following example. So here I am creating the M file with primary function fn underscore demo1 
and we take the input argument range as shown on the right hand side and the sub function test fun at the rate uh, test one of x to compute the zeros of the function x2 minus 4 cosine of x over the range specified in the input variable range note that the use of function handle in the second file so we have f fun that is a function handle for test fun then we have y0 value where we find the function 0 for function and range and then we define the test fun as x x square minus 4 into cosine of x we can show a demonstration like fn underscore demo 1 where we pass the numeric array of 3 and 6 and we get an output of 4.7124 so the 0 of x square minus 4 cosine of x over the range of 3 to 6 occurs at x equal to 4.7124 this is like just a small example of how the function handle can be used here consider a nested function like shown here here is an example on the slide that shows a nested function so here we have a primary function a under it we have a nested function b and d and under b we have a nested function c and under d we have a nested function e we can call a nested function in certain ways we can call it from the level immediately above it so in the code function a can call b or d but it will not be able to call c or e second we can call it from a function nested at the same level within the same parent function so function b can call d and function d can call b third we can call it from a function at any lower level so function c can call b or d but it cannot call e fourth if we construct a function handle for a nested function we can call the nested function from any MATLAB function that has access to the handle last we can call a sub function from any nested function in the same M file one of the most powerful feature of MATLAB is its ability to import and export data so we can import any sort of data from either Excel sheet from CSV file or from dot mat file and we can ex export all those variables in the workspace into a dot mat file so I'm going to show a little demo about exporting and importing data so first let's create some data I'm going to create a matrix A with size 4 that will look something like this now I'm going to create a matrix B with size 5 that will look something like this so basically we have a matrix A that is 4 cross 4 matrix and we have a matrix B that is a 5 cross 5 matrix now let's first save this data so we will select both matrix A and matrix B and then we are going to save this data so I'm going to name it MATLAB underscore data as this data is already existing I will just replace it and it will be stored in a dot mat file format now I'm going to clear this workspace so by using clear all I will clear both the variables and I will clear this command line now let us import this data that we exported so for that we will click on import we will select our exported dot mat file then we will click on open this will open an import wizard this is the wizard that will help us import variables from excel sheet csv and dot mat files so here we can see we have three options we have create variables matching preview and then for excel sheets we have two additional op options that is creating vectors from each column using column names and third option is creating vectors from each row using row names as we are using dot mat file that we just exported we know there are two variables in it matrix A and matrix B so we have option whether we want to import none of them we want to import either one of them or we want to import both of them so in this case I am going to import only one that is matrix B and I am going to click on finish now we can see that matrix B has been imported into our workspace that is a 5 cross 5 matrix now let us see what is the value of the same so we we get the same matrix that we stored so this is how an export and import data in MATLAB works this concludes our video on function and files here I introduced to the most commonly used mathematical function I also gave an introduction to functions in MATLAB and how to use method section we also covered function handles and their use with functions and functions we saw how these anonymous functions sub functions a nested function extend the capabilities of MATLAB and that is it thanks for watching I will see you in the next video